Hello, I'm Laura Chevalier, and I'm a Developer Relations Engineer on the Google Ads API. In this video, I'm going to walk through the high-level usage flow for enhanced conversions for web in the Google Ads API. If you find this video useful, please let us know with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for future videos. Okay, no time to waste, so let's get right into it. First, a reminder to implement the prerequisites before getting started on your implementation. If you watched the introduction video, you already know about the prerequisites, which include creating a web page conversion action, accepting the customer data terms, and configuring tagging with an order ID on your website. With prerequisites implemented, your website captures the order ID and information your system will need to look up first-party data at the same time as the Google tag sends the conversion to Google Ads. With enhanced conversions for web, you leverage your first-party data to send additional user identifiers that can help Google match that user to Google logged in user data and ultimately report a conversion. With that, the first step to upload enhanced conversions for web is to normalize and hash your first-party user identifiers, which can include email address, phone number, and mailing address. If you don't properly normalize and hash the user data before sending it to the Google Ads API, you won't necessarily see errors in your response. Instead, the upload could succeed, but Google Ads won't find a match for the data you uploaded, leading to fewer reported conversions. For that reason, this step is especially important to get right. The next step is to create a conversion adjustment object for each enhancement. The normalized and hashed user data goes in the user identifiers field of the adjustment with a separate user identifier object for each identifier. You'll also need to set the order ID, which uniquely identifies the conversion event. The order IDs on your adjustments should match up to the order IDs that are sent by the tag you configured on your website. With the order ID you provide, Google Ads searches for the conversion event and then uses the additional user data you provide to tie that conversion event to any other recent ad interactions the user undertook while logged in. As a result, Google Ads can recover conversions that might have otherwise been missed for example, cross-device conversions or engaged views on YouTube. Now, going back to our conversion adjustment, there are two other required fields. You'll need to set adjustment type to enhancement and then set conversion action to the resource name of an enabled web page conversion action, the same one that you used in conversion tagging. If you're not sure how to create or find the conversion action, check out our intro video to learn more. With our conversion adjustment ready, the next step is to send it to the API through the conversion adjustment upload service. Make sure that you upload to your Google Ads conversion customer and set partial failure to true. These are required for all conversion uploads, not just enhanced conversions for web. Note that setting partial failure means any errors are returned in the partial failure error field of the API response. Important note on uploads. You must upload the enhancement within 24 hours of the original conversion. Lastly, review your uploads. When you're just setting up your enhanced conversions for web integration, be sure to investigate and address any errors that came up in the partial failure error field. Once you've addressed any errors and completed your integration, it's best to review your uploads by querying for the latest offline data diagnostics report. If anything looks amiss, our troubleshooting guide can help you sort through issues. That's it for the enhanced conversions for web usage flow. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.